Mark Mulholland here, welcome back to my studio and to the second of three videos on how to draw the face. In this video I'll be looking at how to use shadow shapes, a little bit on the anatomy of the face and how I add tone to a drawing. Shadow shapes is the term given to areas of a large shape that has been split into smaller sections. Where different tones or shades meet an outline is drawn. For example, where a light tone meets a mid tone or a dark tone. I have shown this using red lines here. The face is split up into segments whereby outlines are drawn to identify the edges of a given tone. That way a larger shape for example, the larger area of a cheek or a forehead is split into smaller sections and this helps to then show the planes or surfaces of a three-dimensional form. So now over the top of this simple line drawing of a face, this is me starting to draw in shadow shapes. Here I've noticed a shadow underneath the middle part of the nose, working on the end of the nose, outlining that highlight of light tone on the end of the nose. Working up the side of the nose now, there's the shadow on both sides of the nose. This photograph of my model was taken face on with a flash, therefore the shadows happen down the sides of the nose. I can see those shapes, I can also see part of the shape of the cheek as it meets the nose. So if you imagine paint by numbers, you have a surface which is split into shapes you purchase that already split up into those shapes but all we're doing here is starting with a simpler drawing and adding those shapes ourselves. it's a matter of looking identifying and adding in shapes of appropriate sizes into those larger shapes so here i am splitting the cheeks now into segments this is where one tone meets another. The highlight on the cheek, meeting the darker side of the cheek as the face turns round to the side, going towards the ear. It's worth pointing out here again that what we're drawing, what we're aiming to do is divide the face into sections. These are planes, surfaces, three-dimensional surfaces of the face where a dark tone meets a light tone or a light tone meets a mid-tone for example. Mm -hmm. 
Now these shapes don't reveal themselves straight away. There is a good amount of searching and observation that needs to take place in order to identify these shapes. But slowly but surely they present themselves to you. So here I have a large shape. The hair takes up a large volume within this drawing. So I've got to try and split it up into smaller shapes. The highlight there on the hair, the sheen of the hair, is giving me an outline edge. So I have now taken that whole section, the top right hand side of the head as we can see it, and split it up into three zones, a dark zone just around the eyebrow area, lighter area above that, and then that dark chunk on the top of the head. So wherever possible, I'm attempting to take larger shapes, split them into smaller sections, like the two forms of the hair to left and right of the face. These are divided into smaller shapes, but I have to take care not to make these shapes too small. I could get carried away here and put strand after strand after strand of individual lines making up the hair. Now I'm trying to not do that. To a degree I'm stylizing the face using this technique. Although I'm complicating the drawing, I'm actually stylizing and simplifying what I'm looking at. Having mapped out the face into sections, I'm now ready to add tone into these individual shapes. When drawing shadow shapes over the top surface of a drawing, what I'm actually doing is identifying what lies beneath. Using a red pen and some simple lines, I'm going to show you a few muscle groups. So large shapes around about the eyes. These are for muscles called the orbicularis oculi, which help to control the opening and closing of the eyes and then the orbicularis oris around the mouth, again helping to control the opening and closing of that area. Now these two zones, the mouth and the eyes, help to suggest emotions, expressions within the face. Then other muscles which I'm delineating in blue help control the jaw movement and some of these lines are visible in the ways that you draw the shadow shapes over the top of a face. Without complicating things too much with anatomical terminology, the lines I'm drawing in at the moment, you can picture forming frown lines on a face. The muscles that are grouped on the forehead help raise the eyebrows and again suggest emotion. Now these are only a few of the 43 different muscles that we have in our face. The head can also suggest the motion by the way that the head tilts to one side or the other. And that's done by powerful muscles within the neck. So knowing where these muscles are does help us when we're drawing those shapes over the top. Now to add tone into these shadow shapes. So I can add tone, I could also say that I am shading in. Another expression used is to add value. So tone, shade or value are the same thing. But notice I'm holding the pencil 
quite far back. That allows me to have the pencil at a shallow angle with the pencil sharpened quite a bit exposing a lot of the graphite allows a lot of the side of the graphite to be in contact with the paper therefore the lines or the tone that's added is often less scratchy now what i'm doing however in this technique is to apply tone fairly quickly just to show you at pace um, how tone would be added into these shadow shapes Again, doing this on your own, you can be starting like this at pace, but then the tone would be applied more delicately, more methodically. But there's the tone being added down the side of the nose there into that shadow shape, a darker value than the shade on the cheek. Constantly looking at the reference photo to identify what tone needs to go where. So at the early stage of a drawing, tones don't reveal themselves to you straight away. The correct tone requires looking, application of base layers of lighter tones first, and then you can work up to the darker tone. Don't necessarily add the dark tone straight away with the intensity as you see it. Perhaps you need to work up to that. So by adding tone, we are attempting to create the illusion of three dimensions on a two dimensional flat surface. In order for there to be three dimensions, or the suggestion of that, we have to include the three main tones dark, mid-tone, and light tone. So as I mentioned in the first video, these tones are achieved by a couple of things. By the type of pencil that you use, either a H hard pencil, HB mid-range pencil, and B a soft or bold pencil, you're able to achieve light tones and dark tones. You're also able to achieve those varieties of value by how heavy you press on your pencil. As well as this, I can achieve dark tone by layering up light tone on top of light tone on top of light tone and eventually you will get that darker shade. So working on the hair really quite dark above the eye, I can press down quite heavily. Going back over the top of some of the shadow shapes just to make my job easier, allow me to see things. Working with that series of straight lines of shading in at pace. This is often known as killing the white but is a way of getting rid of the plain colour of the paper, getting a good amount of your drawing filled in with base tones, because the creative process for me is uh, quite a mind game to have quite a lot of my drawing filled in with these base layers. Makes me feel that I'm getting ahead well. In that knowledge then, I can settle into my drawing technique and start producing my best.
one thing that I should mention here is that the pencil doesn't always draw in the same direction. So in drawing this form of, I would call it hatching, um, the lines are getting pulled in a variety of different directions. So the pencil straight up and down, or from top left to bottom right, or from top right to bottom left, to create this variety in the mark making that I'm using. Now I am trying to copy what I'm seeing from the photograph, but I am not creating a replica, precise replica. This is a piece of artwork. This is an expressive, creative process, and therefore I'm putting a part of myself into it. So this is where the mark making starts identifying the drawing as me. A part of me goes into this. Of course, there are those who wish to create a drawing which is very realistic, so photorealistic or hyper-realistic, where everything is drawn in a way where you don't see the hand of the artist. It's like a photograph. Whereas I'm using the photograph as a starting point, trying to capture something of the essence of the character. Now whilst you're drawing, using line or applying tone, and you're working from that source image, I encourage you to stop occasionally, get back, stand up, um, and remove yourself from that close proximity to what you're working on. See it from a distance. Take a little bit of time out and come back to your drawing with fresh eyes so that you can see things that need to change, tones that perhaps you've over applied, tones that require further layers over the top in order to get that balance. So looking at my work more holistically in this moment, I'm noticing that the top of the head in my drawing is a little bit too wide around about um, the forehead area. It could narrow down and make the head a little bit more raised, a little bit more pointed. Needing to get some darker tones into the hair to left and right. But this is me starting out. This is only a start. To give you an idea of the amount of time it's taken, drawing out the shadow shapes on this face in this drawing took me around about 10 minutes, followed by the application of tone on this drawing up until this point now has taken me just under 20 minutes. It may take you a bit longer. However, don't rush, take your time and things will happen. Thanks again for joining me in this video. In the next video, in the last of the three videos on how to draw the face, I'll be looking at different techniques and media that you can use to create really expressive drawings. See you then.